What's going on, everybody? It's Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. Daily Log episode 19. Today we'll be covering US 500 and what unfolded. I did participate, but not in a live setting. It was only paper trading. I mentioned yesterday how I was already done for the week. I've already hit my goal for the week as far as profits go. It's something that you have to understand as a money management, as an analyst, you have to be able to put aside the idea that you can continue to keep pressing when you're doing well. Because this is something that I used to do in my early stages. You know, I'd have a really good, you know, couple of days and I would keep trying to push it. And for me personally, like I said, this is all personal experience. So I'll take it with a grain of salt. But if I'm doing extremely well, my emotions are going to be heightened. Same goes for losing. You know, I have a loss limit for the week as well. And, you know, regardless, if I lose on a Monday, if I lose, you know, my my loss limit, then I'm done for the week. Because that's the rules and criteria I have set out for myself. And I asked today in the community tab, if you haven't already, please go over there and comment below what you're struggling with. Um, I definitely want to make a video this weekend over psychology. It's probably going to be like a PowerPoint type of lecture from all the experiences and books and videos and things that I've read over the course of, you know, almost five years now of trading. <clears throat> and basically what can help you guys? Because I think I, regardless of what you're learning, whether it's ICT or, you know, any other trading style, psychology and money management are the two biggest things that I wish I learned or at least put more emphasis on rather than technicals. I mean, they both go hand in hand, but I believe with amazing money management and amazing psychology, regardless of your system, you can be profitable. So if you're struggling with psychology, I highly suggest, like I said, picking up some books and journaling about yourself, seeing where certain things go wrong in your trading, which even me, I knew I was tilting, but I couldn't stop the tilting. And once I read The Mental Game of Trading by Jerry Tindler, I started to understand it's not necessarily about trying to stop it. It's recognizing why you're tilting. And it's not, again, because of losses or because of the money you're losing. It's because of other things. And this goes for fear, goes for greed, goes for confidence, you know, low confidence, overconfidence, goes for so many different things. But I just want to touch on that before going to the video because I will make a video this weekend. So please make a uh, comment below what you're struggling with and I'll uh, make sure to go over it for you guys. So going into today, I know I spoke with you guys last night. I was actually off on my analysis, um, which is okay because even if it, it's kind of hard to predict at this time of night what's going to happen tomorrow. I can really get a feel for it coming into New York session. But the reasoning why we we're bullish today is we ran out the sell side liquidity. So we had the sell stops ran on a daily chart. And if you go ahead and look at US 100 and you look at this week, this weekly low here, or daily low, we did not take it out. On uh, US 30, we came underneath it. And US 500, we came underneath it which is a bullish SMT divergence. It's tipping its hand. There's a crack in the correlation on a daily time frame chart. We're also taking out sell stops. So it's a pretty good indication for uh, a reversal. I'm not saying this is long-term bullish by any means. I'm still looking for bearish prices overall, but it, you know, I did mention we could have a couple retracement days. So looking at it today, we retraced right back into the fair value gap and the body closed beautifully underneath the discount low of that. So that's pretty cool to see. But to be honest with you, I don't really know the bias for the next couple of days here. I'm going to kind of lean neutral for right now. I don't want to give anything out because I, I truly don't know. Uh, we could go higher. We could go lower. I'll, I'll look at the lower time frames and see if I can see something. Let's go into the four-hour chart. So I mentioned yesterday when we were sitting here on the video, we took out the sell side liquidity, and then I was looking at 46 or 3607 or 3606. And I was telling you guys to pay attention to that. And we went ahead and took out the sell side there and rallied back into the close of the day. We came into this fair value gap here. So 
So what I'm looking at now is if we close above this fair value gap, we could revisit this fair value gap here because we still have a large portion open and we could revisit this imbalance in price. So if we come down into this bullish fair value gap and it sends price higher, expect us to trade up into this fair value gap here. And if we continue bullish, look at these relative equal highs, there's a small volume imbalance in here. So watch that area as well. Going down to a one hour time frame. The south side liquidity that I mentioned was taken out. And I will come back to the one hour because I want to mention a couple of things on these order blocks. But I want to give you a perspective on the 15 minute. So if you look at this, let me go ahead and actually take this off. This right here is a market maker buy model. So you have your original consolidation, accumulation, reaccumulation, smart money reversal, first stage distribution, second, and then you ultimately trade up above the buy side liquidity, relative equal highs resting here. See how these are all relative equal highs. So there was <clears throat> buy stops resting above here. Looking at the 15 minute, now this was overnight. We're actually kind of coming into the New York session. We took up the sell side liquidity and we had a really nice displacement higher. So we had our market structure shift here. This is the high that I would really like. So you have your <clears throat> market structure shift above this high here. And we trade back into this fair value gap here, coupled with, if you go to the one hour, your bullish order block. So we go back to a 15 minute, um, let me check the 30 minute. 30 minute has a fair value gap as well. And you're waiting for that discount to go long. So you're not buying in here. You're waiting for price to dip beneath the equilibrium. Price dips beneath the equilibrium. These two down close candles here. It's your order block coupled with a fair value gap, coupled with a discount. Could have went long here. And then we displaced once more above this high here, came back down into this fair value gap here, pay attention to the bodies of the candles, not the wicks. So the bodies of the candles stayed above the discount low of that fair value gap. Or yeah, so looking at the one hour, there was this bullish order block as well. So we are combining higher time frame and lower time frame PD arrays to get a better bias overall. Let me put this on real quick. So I will go down to a one minute. I post this on my Twitter. This is just a pap uh, paper trade, so don't take it too seriously, but it was something I was looking at in the morning. I actually took a small loss here and I was just done for the way, done for the day. I was just trying to get my reps in in the morning. I'm um, trying to gauge where price was going, but I saw these relative equal highs building up coming into the New York session. We had the sell stops resting beneath here. So price ran out the sell stops, displaced higher. We had our market structure shift here. And then we returned back into this bullish order block here, coupled with the fair value gap from this low here to that high there. And then ultimately I, I took out above the high here. And then price displaced lower. I really, uh, I, I woke up late. I knew I wasn't gonna be trading today. So I just kind of hopped on the charts uh, right at the open just to kind of get a feel for price, seeing where it was going. I saw price displaced lower after this. I saw a small little uh, fair value gap here on the one minute. And I was like, oh, I might as well just see if I can uh, get a short. I really wasn't paying attention too much to price, to be honest with you. And as soon as we closed above the survival gap, I knew ultimately that I was incorrect. I was wrong on my bias. So I went short here and then I just closed up the trade above here as soon as we closed above it. And price ran higher. If you were looking at, let's say you were trying to find this YouTube model, and this is how the YouTube model or any model for any means 
you can take losses on your model because you're perceiving it wrong. I've talked about this a lot of times. It's not it's not the algorithm or your market your model not working. It's you, the analyst who is perceiving the model incorrectly. So you could have seen this. Buy stops ran, displaced lower, market structure shift, and trading back into a premium with a fair value gap, and you went short, and then you got stopped out, right? The reasoning behind all this is the narrative. You have to know the narrative overall over anything. The narrative is, is the most important, and you get your narrative from the daily time frame, the four hour time frame, the daily time or from the one hour. When you should have known on the daily coming into New York session, we took out sell stops, we had an SMT bullish divergence. And then if you're familiar with market maker buy models, you would have seen that as well. And we had relative equal highs resting above here. Uh, I have this small fair value gap noted, but we ended up taking out the buy side liquidity. There wasn't much after that, personally, <clears throat> that I would have participated in after we displaced higher here. So this would have been the best opportunity for me or obviously underneath here. The trade ICT recorded of the day was, I believe, on the one minute. So remember, this whole structure is that 15 minute displaced higher coming into that 15 minute for value gap coupled with the one hour order block. So price displaced higher here, came back into this fair value gap here, which he ended up going long. And then you have the relative equal highs here that you could have targeted to take out your either partials or you know fully out of your position. So that's the reason why he went long. Price tapped into this fair value gap right here. So that could have been another long opportunity for you. Like I said, I touched on this coming into here. There's nothing much that I would have went long on. I would have rather seen price take out these relative equal lows on the one minute and trade back into a five minute or 15 minute for value gap. I actually had these lows marked up <clears throat> coming into lunch. I really wanted them to take out the lows here and then price rally to take out the buy side liquidity. That was probably the best trade um, if that did happen for me. With the market maker buy or sell models, you always, I guess what ICT calls it, is the unicorn trade. You're trying to find the second stage of distribution and enter in on that. That way, it's the highest probability you're targeting the original consolidation. And I've talked about this before. Market maker buy models or sell models are a mirror. What I mean by that is... Whatever you see happening on the left side of the chart, you see happening on the right side of the chart. So where you have your first stage and your second stage, you want to see your first stage and your second stage happen on the right or the left side, you know, um, depending on what you're doing, the sell model or the buy model. So your original consolidation starts here. Accumulation. Reaccumulation. You have your smart money reversal here. Displacement higher, comes back in right where the first stage was. Second stage is right there. And then we just trade higher. And if you're inside of a market maker buy or sell model and to see if it's valid or invalid, you don't want to see it trade beneath. Like let's say, you know, we came up higher and then we trade beneath this low here, any of these lows, that's invalid. That's no longer to me that that shows me that it's no longer a valid market maker buy or sell model. Um, looking at the rest, like I said, tomorrow, keep an eye on this for value gap. If we really displace lower, um, that could be indication, but we could have a swing low formed here. So watch this. This could stay intact after taking out the buy uh, sell stops. We could have a choppy day here where we, you know, just stay range bound. And then maybe Friday we pop above this. There is a fair value gap here. So watch that. I don't see any reasoning to really drive higher. To me, it was just a small retracement to take out anybody really going short. I think that's going to be it for me tonight. I will touch base with you guys tomorrow. Until then, good luck and good trading.